The Moscow subway. It's almost beautiful. Stained glass and chandeliers in some stations. And it's very efficient. The government decided it needed to move lots of people without creating surface traffic jams and more air pollution. So it poured money into the subway. The result is clean, fast trains that come so often, you seldom have to wait. During the rush hour, a train stops every minute. Oh, I was young then. That was one of my 2020 reports from the days when Russia was still communist. Um, and the subway was nice. I, I think there were plenty of communists at ABC, too, who wanted me to point out good things about communism. At ABC, people would say things like, hey, in communist countries, you don't have to worry about health care, finding a job. You're taken care of. But then, of course, the people in the Soviet Union rebelled, and it became clear that communism did not work. Thousands and thousands of West Germans come to make the point that the wall has suddenly become irrelevant. I thought, now, finally, people will understand that communism and socialism are not good ideas. But despite the failure of central planning everywhere, lots of people still passionately believe in it. Jesse Meyerson is one. He hosts a podcast called Disorderly Conduct. The title refers to things like the Occupy Wall Street protests. And you call yourself a communist. That's what you advocate. That's why you invite me on the show. Right. But are you nuts or how can your <laughs> smart guy talk to you? What's your reasoning? Well, uh, just like you could point out all of the many failures of the Soviet regime and all sorts of other totalitarian communist regimes or communist party-led regimes, it's very easy to point out lots of failures in the capitalist regimes like ours. Millions of people living in poverty, you've got millions of people locked up in prisons, you've got, got wars constantly, extraction of natural resources. Communist countries These are terrible don't. failures. The program that I lay out, I wouldn't call it communism, but one of guaranteed jobs and income, the taxation of land value, public options for banking, these sorts of things are what I would propose in the United States, and I think that none of them require anything like gulags or the, the you know, sparrows in China or whatever. does it make you question it, wondering why this hasn't succeeded anywhere? I think there are good reasons it hasn't succeeded. And I think that a lot of people who've done the most significant inquiry into why it hasn't succeeded have been leftists who, have, who still have the dream of universal material security guaranteed by collective ownership of wealth and want to do it better than it's ever been done before. We are the richest country in the history of riches and countries. We could guarantee material security for everybody. And can you imagine the explosion of personal creativity and individual expression that would happen if people were not grinding, say, working two, three jobs just to make ends meet, just to feed their families? I think it would be a, a dream of a sort of um, perversely a libertarian fantasy to have everybody with the freedom to pursue happiness. I think they do have that freedom now. And oh, even the no. poor, compared to human history, they live much better lives. Poor people in America, on average, have more than one car. They have air conditioners, TVs, refrigerators. This is not like suffering under communism. Uh, I think it's very much like suffering under communism. I think you'll find that in the Soviet Union they had TVs and refrigerators. I mean, that, these are simply not the trappings of a full, free, dignified life. I spent 10 days in the Soviet Union under the time of communism, and my observation was that communism sucks the life out of people. People just looked sad. They kept their heads down. And it wasn't just fear of the secret police. It's communist economics. I went to a restaurant that was supposed to cater to foreigners. I had a reservation and I was on time. Stossel reservation? Yes, yes. Wherever. Of course, okay. if I were an important official, or as my Russian-speaking friend points out, if I'm an important foreigner, then I get in. The sign on the door said, no places. But inside, there were empty tables. Diners wait for their food while the waitresses sit around and drink tea. Since the restaurant belongs to the state, there's no profit-seeking owner around to push the staff. This waiter's hiding out in the back. I watch these two guys play with the wine bottles and talk to each other for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, the diners wait. My point is that without that greed, profit-seeking motive, people don't try very hard. And when they are driven by profit and they try hard, they feel good and they create stuff. That's good. People create stuff for all sorts of reasons, not just profit. 
the reason the musician makes work or the reason that a sociology researcher looks it's into not a phenomenon. Profit, true. It's not profit. It's not everybody. It's, it, there's tons and tons of ways that we could reward people who show what you might think of as entrepreneurship, right? Like the spirit of creativity, wanting to self-express. There's lots of ways to do that without depriving millions and millions of people of the means to subsist unless they go and lock themselves in ruthless competition with millions of other people who are also out of work. Oh. In Russia, the only place I found any life was where people risked their freedom by illegally trying to practice capitalism. It's illegal to buy from foreigners or foreign reporters, but if you stand around on a busy street looking like an American tourist, I guarantee you'll be surrounded by buyers. Have you something for sale? If you want to, to buy shoes, boots. The hot item turned out to be my running shoes. The sneakers, you know. Sneakers. These sneakers, yeah. this New Balance, you know the brand name. Well, I know, I have New Balance. It didn't matter that they were worn out. How much you paid for this, for sneakers? I think like $60. $60. If I give you 100 rubles, this is not 100, 100 rubles, of course. Wow. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's like $150 on... That's almost three weeks' pay in this country. This is a really distorted economy. Well, I would say that, look, there were markets for thousands of years before capitalism came to be, and there are markets that are going to exist after capitalism is over, uh, one way or the other. Communists love a good farmer's market. The point that I'm making is that we have to break the power of the market over everyone's lives and liberate ourselves to be dignified human beings with guaranteed material security. Dignified human beings with guaranteed security from the state, and then we will live in like in communes from the state sharing from the state and from the interest of capital and we'll just be all happy together john that sounds so wonderful to me i can't wait for it capitalism is an evil system set up to benefit the few at the expense of the many okay that's filmmaker michael moore we've come to expect nonsense like that from him but he's not alone my last guest was big on communism, and when I interviewed people in Times Square about capitalism and poverty, some said things like this. Capitalism might be the problem that creates so many poor people. Capitalism creates poor people? I suppose that's true if your definition of poor is having less than absurdly wealthy people, but where capitalism is allowed, it's true there's income inequality. Many people say that's immoral, but Ayn Rand, who grew up under communism, wrote very popular books that said, so what if some people have more than others? That's part of freedom, and it's totally moral. Yaron Brook runs an institute that's based on her philosophy. Yaron, this is just selfish, and the communists who just left would say it's mean. Well, but that's ridiculous. I mean, the idea, so take, take the last comment about the poor, right? Before capitalism, 300 years ago, 99% of the population of the earth were poor. Everybody but the kings. Everybody except the kings who stole, they were the real stealers, were basically poor. Today, everybody, including the poor, are much, much richer than anybody was back then. And it's all due to capitalism. It's all due to the freedom, to property rights, the ability of people to go out there and make and produce at whatever level they can and to feed themselves. And one other thing, I think we need to be careful not to conflate what we have today with capitalism. I mean, what we have today is this mixed economy, right? We have government run schools. Government run schools. We have minimum wages. We have a welfare state that writes you a check uh, tells so you that you work. don't work, tells you not to work. So, so we don't have capitalism today, but when it's tried and to the extent that it's tried, China today, millions of people rise out of poverty. One of the untold stories really of the last 40, 50 years is the fact that 800 million people have come out of poverty in Southeast Asia. 800 million people out of poverty in Southeast Asia because they've implemented a little bit of capitalism. And before they did that, tens of millions of people were starving to death. To sit here and argue for communism, when communism has been directly responsible for the brutal murder of well over 100 million people, if you take... Well, he would say that those were just bad leaders, but the idea of sharing is good. No, the idea of sharing is what directly leads to those kind of the, the gulags and, and, Why? and the Why? Why should it have to? Because it, the fact is we're not all the same. We're not all equal. Just look around any group of people. Some of us work hard and some of us don't. Some of us are, are really smart and some of us don't. The only way then to make us equal is to take from those who've created and to give it to those. We're talking take sounds soft, sounds nice, right? Take. But no, we're talking about take. We're talking about pulling out guns, 
sticking your hand in, in your pocket and taking out the money, stealing. That's what. And, and, and you may say, well, they, they don't do that in America, but try not paying, tape, not paying Pay your taxes. taxes. Men with guns will come to your house and force you to pay or put you in jail. Absolutely. And, and of course, the more you make, the more productive you are, the more wealth you create, the more innovative you are, the more you've used your mind, the harder you work, the more they take from you. And that's, in my view, that is inherently unjust. Equality is massively unjust. The idea that we should all be forced to be the same when we're clearly all so different. When I was in communist Russia, people told me, some people anyway, that they liked the security that communism gave them. They knew they had a job. I can be sure of the tomorrow, you see. That's the thing I like. I can be sure of my work. You see, I never have any doubts. What kind of freedom in the United States? Tough freedom. It's, uh, you have to worry about your life or your apartments. Americans have to worry. Life requires worrying. Life requires a certain amount of stress. That's what, that's what it is. So they want to live off of somebody else worrying. Somebody actually has to produce the stuff that they live off of. Look, there are always going to be people who want it easy, who want to just get by. Uh, I, I, worked, I worked for a while with somebody who had come from the Soviet Union and was complaining that he had to go into the grocery store and choose between eight different types of toilet paper, and that really upset him. He just wanted to be told. But the fact is, and you said it earlier on the show, they were gray, they were unhappy, they looked miserable, and, and that is what that kind of life, if you don't challenge yourself, if you don't have a little bit of anxiety in life, if you're not a little pushed, if you're not trying to strive towards something, life becomes dull and boring and meaningless. And I think to a lot of these people, it did. And it's still dull and bad in much of Russia, but in some countries, Estonia, Czech Republic, Poland, they have brought excitement and wealth and joy so, and, and it's vibrant and exciting and dynamic and you go and the reason in Russia is that they took one authoritarian system communism and replaced it with another oh. authoritarian system call it uh, fascism but it's statism it's state control either way